We are here at the Bait Store on Melrose Avenue in Los Angeles, California to host a two-day pop-up vintage watch event with our good friends, the Davidoff Brothers, hoping to get everybody in a room together to share our passion and love for watches. Let's go take a look. First couple watches that walked into the pop-up today on Saturday are probably a couple of the craziest watches we're going to see all weekend. We have two 13ZN Longines chronographs. I'm going to let the man himself, Adonia, tell us about them because they're his watches and he knows everything about them. So these are called the Tre Take. That's kind of the famous nomenclature. And the reason is because it's got three notches in the back. That's how you open the case back. These are from the 40s. Both of these are very rare and sought after from a collector perspective. Great condition. You can see the dial, this one in particular, is two-tone. There's very little aging or patina on it. It's very even. They're uh, so hard to find yeah. with nice dials. So, so hard, hard to find, to find because nice of the styles. aging. This is like a little known thing, but the chronograph hand has a tiny dot below, and you can see that that's a very original feature that's oftentimes swapped out. It's just Fantastic example. No, these are so hard to come by. Yeah. I don't think I've even ever sold a Tretake 13ZN. Really? I've sold regular Tretake time only. Because, because they don't you come just, around. Though. They just don't come around. Yeah. And every time they come around, we fight for them off eBay. Cool. Can we see what's on your wrist? Because you have an awesome watch too. So it's something you don't see every day, except if you look at our website, I guess. <laughs> Wait, but this is plastic crystal. Uh, oh, okay, so yeah, this is even rare. This is an 1803 date date with a green lacquered, quote unquote, Stella dial, presumably made for European and Asian markets or Arabic markets as well, that Rolex tested these like wacky colors to kind of drum up more interest in the model in the 70s and 80s. This one is an early version with a plastic crystal. Like I said, reference 1803, which you do not see a lot. And it looks really nice. Conditions really nice. It looks really nice. Look at the case. And then look at the dial. Look at the loom plots. Stunning watch, man. Congrats. And it matches your whole vibe. Right, right, it yeah. matches your vibe. I love it. So this is arguably, like we were just saying, Gerald Berry's most famous, iconic design, the Patek Philippe Nautilus. This is the original. Reference 3700. Like Emil was asking, it's a uh, wider bracelet, so slash one. Right. They have slash 11, which is a more tapered bracelet. This one, actually, interestingly right. enough, is yeah, Cosine no, Guma, which was a retailer out of Switzerland, which is kind of like a Tiffany Co signature, yeah, yeah. same thing. When we opened this watch, it was the first time it was ever opened. The gasket was like melted inside. We had to drill out wood and screw I don't think he's ever been serviced. We're going to have his service when we get back. It's actually keeping a good time, though. It has some natural aging. What happens on these is, is they peel a little bit. You can just see the base plate underneath. It's a brown color. Uh, but yeah, fantastic. Please tell me about this. So if I'm not mistaken, this is called the zebra. Being able to melt the metals together like this was very unusual and a very brand user technique for their watches. And I love like graduated bracelet as you go around. It's a yellow blood steel. It's a fused metal. It's yeah. really complicated to do this. So when we speak about Gerald Gent that designed the Royal Oak, the watch you have, yeah. he only designed the basic case. All the later variations were designed by two people, mm -hmm. Jacqueline Limier and Emmanuel Guet. Okay. Jacqueline made hundreds of variations of the watch, including the more lady ones, like this one. Removing the date and having this, she designed that. She is for me more important than designer. Isn't your agenda? The agenda that has in mind one watch. Jacqueline and Emmanuel designed hundreds of watches. Yeah. Tell us about this watch. This is a 3430-1, made in 1964, sold in 1965. I purchased it last year for about 16,000. I've never seen anything like that. That is yeah. wild. That's yeah, it's got a little bit of droppable on the hands there. This tricolored finish has been made I know that maybe five times. It's a lot for me to be like, oh my gosh, if you haven't seen before, this is it. This is foggy for me. I met a gentleman with a Tiffany Patek. And he asked me what I wanted for it. I said I wouldn't take this. I like that one. That's the truth. Kind of soft. I couldn't think of. I couldn't think. Of, it's not for sale for any price. Even add some ridiculous markup. Yeah. I got something to show you. Dude, you see it yet? I saw this on somebody's wrist at RDA Boutique in the design district in Miami, and I literally walk over and I'm like, Hey man, can I see your watch? It's not weird, you know. And I was so excited to see it in person. He didn't take it off. Well, let me find a little seat in the metal. Dude. Nice. It's pretty nice, isn't it? That's why I wanted to get rid of the Fodi team on. The new Dean Fort 50 Fathoms at Indra, and it is the first time that that team has been like a reimagination, reedition of the original 50 Fathoms. 
they've always like done some certain design elements, but they never did like a proper like homage to their original watch. They finally did it, and I think the result is fantastic. So it's the case mimics their original bronze case watches, which is a very rare variant. Bezel mimics their original breaker light bezel, has a moisture indicator for like no spec, like the blue points of the thing is that the original. It's a proper reading. Okay. Yeah. Hello, we are here with Fred Savage. Hello, how are you? Show me your watch. Yes. What is it? This is a, a new acquisition that's just arrived yesterday. This is a Blancpain 50 Fathoms, double signed with Aqualung, with the retailer Aqualung. This is a purchase from last month's Sotheby's sale in New York. I was there to support my good friend Jeff Hess, who just started as the head of watches in the Americas uh, at Sotheby's. So I went to the auction and came, came back with this. Wow, wow. What do you think of this new acquisition? I really like it. The band gives a really rustic look to it. Uh-huh. A very archaic, rustic look. Yes. It kind of gives it more value. You like that? Yes, I like it. Can you tell me about what you're wearing? This is a vintage Bova snorkel. Yes. 666. Uh-huh. I got it from my good friend Ken and one of my watch. Yeah. You've known Ken a long time? Yes, ever since I came in to want to buy a watch with my dad many years ago. Thank you for watching. If I were to choose one out of the three you have here, okay. what would get this one? It's a 69, it has a flat link bracelet, a dot over 90, it's a step dial. It has the hippocampus on the back. No, wow. It like it literally checks like all the boxes. Like this is like it does be master before getting into like the super rare ones. Wow. Which movement is this? So this is still the uh, 861. Okay. It's already a second generation movement. This is the watch that's been worn by astronauts. Early 60s as test pilots. What do you prefer about this one versus the other ones? Well, the flat, the flat wing bracelet because okay. this bracelet is the same since 1957. Oh wow. Because like if if you were to choose one watch here, you know like. This is like a bell one. Tell me the price again, sorry. I have an 8,000 dollars. 8,000. Gonna take a while. Take a This is. We need like, we need like every week. Wow. Oh, man. I think you found enough. I. <laughs> yeah, this is. Uh, okay, I'm gonna take a walk. I gotta check with my wife, make sure I'm not gonna get divorced if I come home with this watch. <laughs> so I'm just gonna ask you a quick question. What's yes. on your wrist today? 6263, six, big eye. Go use this. 73. Beautiful. I like the patina on the dial as well. Yeah, it's like super, like yellowish. <laughs> Morgan, what are you wearing? First of all, very, you very gotta get this. Oh my god. This <laughs> sign. This is limited edition, guys. One out of one. Is this your apron? Hey, my apron. I'm gonna right. cook with this. So, what's on the right wrist? I got the right with Ed White's 321 caliber, the old school, original. Not the new modern one, because they all kind of look the same, but to the yes. trained eye, 321. And the first one, of course, the 2915. The broad arrow. Beautiful. When the Davido brothers call you, you invite, you show up. You gotta, you gotta represent. Bring out the big guns. You gotta bring both. Come on, that's how it works. Three, two, one, all the way, baby. All the way. Beautiful. Lulgine Master. Two of the wildest patinas right here. This is a 4270, the Mushroom Busher, and it's just in crazy condition with that like very even patina. And then on this side is the classic Trey the 4974. You can also see that. Crazy patina. So the difference between these two on the mushroom pusher, it's an earlier version. That's right. Uh, it had a, a high pressure case back, snap, snap That's right. case back. 1939 on okay. this one. So I think it was like patented in 38. That's right. It was made for a very short yep. run. <laughs> you can see right here, you've got the reference numbers on the back. Very rare in this configuration. And then on this one, you've got the Trey Take bag. So that's the screw back right there. Yeah, so Trey Take meaning three Three slots. notches that allow you to twist it off. Tell us, what are you wearing? Black Bay 58, Black one Bay of my 58. favorites. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's what I wear as like my weekend warrior. I, I don't want to mess watch. anything up. I've Same traveled thing. everywhere with it. Same. It gives me the big crown vibes, but you know, it's durable. Perfect. Can yeah. around. Wesley, what do you got on your head? This is uh, Cartier Tank Louis. Very nice. What year is that from? Because it's more modern iteration. 20, 22. Oh, nice. It's a beautiful watch. <laughs> Next, Don Dorner to Ian. What are you wearing today? It's early 2000s. It's, uh, it's a bright link cold. Oh, cool. My dad's. Nice. And, uh, I love this watch. Yeah, you know what? Like, I have a watch from my father. It was a Reverso Duo. It's the watch that I don't wear very often, but it's the watch that got me into watches. But it's the only watch that I own that I will absolutely never sell because it came from my dad. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to get my dad into watches. He's just a carries a stamp collector. 
But like, I love, you know, I love seeing stuff like that because like you have to inherit a watch from a family member to understand like how special it is. I love this watch. It needs to get serviced. And I just don't, I was telling Wes earlier, I just do not want to, I've never been without it since I've gotten it like 10 years ago. Right. And uh, I don't, I, it never leaves me. Nice. So it's like. It, to get it serviced. If it never works, if it never works <laughs> yeah. again, I'm You want okay it to work. That. Well, you know, and it's funny because like Kirill, Lunar Royster, he tells people, like especially for vintage watches, that he's not selling them like a proper timekeeping device. He's selling them a piece of art. Sure. You know, like a collectible. Wearable so art. A wearable art. So like my position is it should work and keep relative good time but you can't expect them vintage watches to function as well as something like that but you're wearing that because you love the watch and like I'm sure it keeps reasonably good time even though not being serviced it works yeah it works, well, it works. you know it's like it's fine it was sitting in my desk drawer it's 2014 I was about to go to college and my dad has a few nice watches he has an Omega and he had a Breitling right and uh, my mom bought both for him and he wore none of them because he's a doctor doesn't he you know, does surgery didn't want to take it on at all kind of thing. and uh, I asked him I was like can I have this for college can I take it he's yeah. like sure and so I remember putting on a black leather strap that I got from a local jewelry store in North Carolina and brought it out to California and, and it's never been without me. Dude, that's yeah. awesome. It's a great story. What do you wear? Yeah, I'm wearing an 18039, so a white gold date date, but this is like one of very few pieces known made with a green jasper dial, mm, it's so it's a jasper stone. We're standing here with a very good friend of mine, Wolfgang, who has some amazing watches, but what are you wearing tonight, kind sir? I bought for you. Oh, big dog. Six to six feet gold. So you might remember one of my favorite watches from the Bali episode on YouTube yeah. was this beautiful 6265 with tropical registers that I featured very many times because I loved it. Wolfgang obviously has some amazing watches. This one is a reference 6263, 18 karat, 14 yep. karat, 18 karat gold. Black dial, it's one everybody wants. Beautiful watch, my friend. And you uh, got it because of the advice of this gentleman. So, <laughs> build a collection, that's the guy you call. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Here we have one of my closest friends <laughs> who will maybe restore my car at some point. It'll eventually maybe. be. Eventually. Maybe. Marco of TLG Auto, the best Porsche mechanic in no. the world? No. Dare I say the world? In, in North California. Hollywood. <laughs> in North Hollywood. What are you wearing to our get together tonight? I got this old 5513. For me. From you. It's a nice original watch. The bracelet doesn't have too much stretch. The case isn't over polished or cut in any way, really. And it's a perfect daily watch. The dial is beautiful. The crystal is beautiful. I bang it into stuff and it, it seems to take a licking and keep on ticking. And you are beautiful, my friend. Can you tell us what is on your wrist tonight? Sure. This is uh, Grand Seiko SBGA 415 or 445 in the Japanese market. It's marketed here in the U.S. as U.S. exclusive, but it is not. I imported this one from Japan. Okay. Well, tell us spring, about the dial. Sure. It's the winter dial, and it's a spring drive movement, as you can probably see, with that smooth sweep of the second hand, yeah. the power reserve there, and it's a titanium watch, case, and bracelet, and that's the 62 GS case. I love Grand Seiko collectors because they know everything about their watches. They're oh, so I'm this passionate. nerdy. I'm this nerdy Dude, I love everything. it. I love it. I love it. Because you can't not buy one of these and not like be like super into the watch. That is you true. You have to, and it's great. That is true. I, I, this is my third Grand Seeker. That's so awesome. I'm, That's awesome. Yeah, clearly a fan. Thank you for showing to us. No problem. What are you wearing tonight? So this is my uh, Rolex Explorer, Explorer 2. I love this watch very much. You might notice it looks a little different from a regular Explorer. That's because I sent it to a guy in England called the Dial Artist, who is a uh, micro artist, and he painted an, a satellite view of Bora Bora on my dial. Why Bora Bora? Just love it. I wore this watch on a, a sailing trip that we took to Tahiti, and it was a very important trip for a few reasons. One, it was just an amazing sailing trip, and it was also the last time that my brother-in-law, John, got to really travel before he got sick uh, with cancer. He ultimately passed away last year, but uh, yeah, thank you, but, but uh, solid dude. Shout out, John Stein. Anyway, it's such a unique place. And I like to be reminded of it whenever possible. And Dude, that's awesome. You took a watch, you customized it, took made it a watch, your own. Made it my own. You'll never sell that now because no. it's sentimental value. No. And it's yours. And it's a great it's watch. Yours. Great watch to travel with. And now mine stands out from all the other ones. Yeah, I like it this Which that's absolutely a fact. Yeah. Dude, yeah. thanks for showing cool. to us. Cool, thank you. Please tell us what is on your wrist um, tonight. So yeah, this is a 1016. This uh, I bought it from the original owner. Oh like, nice. Three years ago. How did you find the, the original owner? I met him at uh, an art show. Like, oh, wow. Five years earlier, nice. I gave him my business card. I was like, "Do you ever want to sell?" Let yeah, me know. and then like 
And Emma Kitty like ended up sending me the email. I like I forgot about it to be honest. Nice. So, yeah, we were able to make nice Matt dial. Yeah. And that's great. That's great that you like were able to like yeah, so, yeah, follow. Mark, he followed up. Mark you know, Lee, like that good honest use condition. He wore it like for like 40 years. You know? yeah, yeah, you, you can tell. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. You yeah. know, like you plant these seeds sometimes, hoping that somebody will follow up with you, and they do. Right. And your yeah. patience paid off. Everyone Beautiful to watch. Thanks, man. Can you tell us what's on your wrist? Okay, uh, on on my wrist, I've got a UG pull router, yeah. all 18 karat gold, and it's got a very unusual dial. Dial, yeah, I see that. Y yeah, tell um, us about it. It's like a honeycomb style. Though. Yeah, it's it's like a honeycomb style. It's it's just incredibly rare. I I've been looking at pull routers for a while. I've never seen anything like it. Maybe it's it's in the pull router book that just came out. But aside from that, I haven't seen it. Omar has one of the greatest collections I know of UG Tri Compaxes. Yeah, we I love him very much. Yeah, I think I have maybe almost three dozen. Whoa! So while you're standing here, yeah, what do you think of Breitling buying UG? I'm Excited? Not, I, I actually am. Uh, you know what? There, there's a little bit of fear that what if they don't execute it right, but everything that I've seen about them and how dedicated they are to getting it right, creating their own movements, their own cases that aren't going to be the Breitling cases, and, and, they, that, and that they're going to price it at, 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 as higher price point. Be, at yeah, a higher, higher price, price point, point as a premium brand, which is what it is. And I've heard that, like they've said, do not expect watches anytime soon, like maybe 2026, because they yeah. want to do it right. They have Fred Mandelbaum, who we talked about earlier. Right. Shout out to Watch Fred on Instagram, who's on their board, who will, I hope, steer them in the right direction. Yes. I, if yeah. anybody can, it's him to make sure they stay true to the original brand. Yeah. And no, I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really excited. Awesome. I, I hope they stay true to the design style. Story time. So you have the Onyx style, which is just get Onyx, black, yes. but the issue with Onyx is that it's more fragile. Mm -hmm. And Obsidian is a bit more flexible. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they took Obsidian, which was already dark, and they mm -hmm. cut into thin, thin slabs. And what happens when you take a dark translucent material or mineral and you cut it very thin, it becomes transparent, like colorless. Oh, so the black is gone from so the So the black is gone, unless okay. you put like many of them. Okay. So what happened is, is that when they made the dial, all these obsidian dials, and they, they took a black lacquer to glue it on the base. So if you look, the glue started to oxidize, to rub, to come apart, to age, to patina, whatever you want to call it. So every obsidian dial ages from around the dial, or from the date window, or from the center hand area. And you will see it always, always a progression from the outside in or inside out. It was a long discussion, and when you look at it, it's like really this like unique aging. Oh, well, first of all, before I look at your beautiful watch that you brought to show me, mm -hmm. tell us about what's on your wrist, because that's Fantastic. This is a Cartier Tanks on Trey. I think 70s-ish. I always loved Cartier. Couldn't get around my fat meat wrists, right. but when I saw this, <laughs> it was shortly before they did the anniversary. Right, and I love the mid-sized ones. Yeah, I, the, the, the large jumbo ones are great, but like I've got smaller wrists, so they like spill over my whole wrist. Yeah. These are but, absolutely perfect size. It's this, such a classic watch. It's yes. perfect for me. Oh my God. Well, I know you're not selling this one today, but when, if you ever do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a line for that one, but that, that one is one of the keepers. It's Here, just, it's awesome. Every it's time I wear it, it's just... So nice. Oh my god. Well, hold on, a quick pan over to the celebrity in the room. <laughs> Mr. Morgan Kane. Come on. Can you me? Time to up. Okay, so the watch at hand, though, yeah. is a reference 6238 pre-Daytona with a silver dial. This is before the Daytona line was launched. This one probably circa early 60s, 1960, 61, maybe 62. Essentially the same watch as a 6239 Daytona, just a different dial. Clearly the inspiration for it. Really nice. These are really hard to find in good condition too. Beautiful watch. So you yeah. just don't wear it anymore? I just don't Falling out of love? I'm a promiscuous watch owner. Right. <laughs> Until your next well, mistress, right? But I mean, you're a guy who did these for a You love what you do. You left being a lawyer full time to do yep. this. With it. And it's just like, I just get lost in this and it's just like, I was talking to a buddy of mine and he said, it's a dying art. Right. Digital, mechanical, Absolutely and that's is. the romance. But you know what, and it's great because it is a dying art in some respects, but it's also not because you have all this new age independent watchmakers that are pushing the boundaries, making these beautifully handcrafted yes. watches, and then you have brands like Breitling who just bought Universal Genie yes. to revive a brand that only guys like us really care about, right. and hopefully now the general public will be more educated yes. about them. I and mean, I just think this has been doing one thing for like 60 years, right. and doing it perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. You just love it. Absolutely. Beautiful watch. So in the world of Speedmaster, when you speak about NYU, you really find that this was people that made the Apollo missions possible through their life, through their, their hard work, 
And when the astronauts from Apollo 11 finally landed on the moon, as a thank you, Omega made a small series, about two dozen gold speed masters. Number one was given to Nixon, number two was given to his vice president, Spiro Agnew, and number three was given to somebody else. This is number four. This was given post-mortem to Grissom, uh, Gus Grissom, a person who died in a photo one mishap. So the condition of the watch, he has a first generation bracelet, it has the, the, the small script, it has his name on the back, it mentions the two missions that he was on previously to the Apollo 1, Mercury 4 and Gemini 3. And it says astronaut Virgil I. Grissom, known as Gus Grissom. The condition of the watch is spectacular. You can see the darkening patina on all the gold surfaces. The only place that's not patinated is all on the sharp edges. My brother and I have unworn this watch more than anybody else before. In most of the ones you will see astronaut watches floating around. We sold a few other ones, are all destroyed. But in terms of condition, this one is probably the nicest, other than the number one and number two, which are in the Mega Museum. So this is probably the nicest publicly available. Stay tuned next week as we sit down in our final Los Angeles video with legendary collector Mr. Paul Zuckerman of Spike's Car Radio fame. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, anything you can do to help us grow the channel. And we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks. Bye.